Your FedEx package has arrived safely. Okay. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> Hey, it's me, Go Hoarding. So I'm here with six packages, which is seven or eight animals total. So I've never actually gotten this many delivered in one day, so I thought it would be a good time to do an unboxing video, because it's been a while. Uh, this is like the first reptile unboxing, so let's just get started. So if you don't know why I have so many animals delivered, it's because a lot of people have to rehome their animals, and we take in almost any species from anywhere in the USA uh, through the company Emerald Scales. Basically what you do is you buy a package from us, we send you a package with all the supplies needed, and you send it back to us where we work with the animal, we rehab it, make sure it's healthy, and rehome it through the site. There's currently animals available. I'm sure you love me plugging my company every single video. Normally we get about probably five animals, like five to 10 animals a week. And a lot of them arrived all on the same day for some reason. Uh, so yeah, they were all at the FedEx facility. We went and picked them up and now we're gonna check them out and see what we've got. So a lot of people do get really worried shipping animals. Um, they're scared it's unsafe, it's dangerous for the animal, that the animal might die. These are all possibilities, but the likelihood is super low if you make sure you uh, ship the animal properly, follow our instructions exactly, and make sure you ship on the proper day, which we'll give you, because weather uh, has a lot to do with it. For example, the first issue with this box is the heat pack, actually. This one is coming from Virginia, and there's one animal in here. It's a snake. We'll find out what it is. Also packaging, you can package it with lots of different things. This snake ended up pooping in the box because this is soiled, so that's fun. Uh, please don't feed your animal before shipping it. <laughs> Ideally, snakes will not eat for about a week before shipping, and lizards and turtles will not eat for about three days. And then they come in this little package here. This is also soiled and it smells disgusting. I try to keep the packaging when I can, because the less packaging we have to throw away, the cheaper we can make shipping. Because when you buy an animal, shipping is $45 flat rate to anywhere in the US. But it actually costs us between $55 and $80 to ship every animal. So overall, this person did good shipping their animal. So I'm just gonna make sure I don't cut the snake and I'm just gonna cut straight into the bag. It's like cutting eggs open early, like our favorite YouTuber does. Um, so yeah, opening these is always interesting. You never really know what to expect for sure. Um, no one's ever sent us an incorrect animal. No one's ever surprised us with an animal, but they are often in conditions that are not specified. People will send us very sick animals without telling us, and that's not epic. So this ball python's super warm because the heat pack fell on it, which is okay. It feels like it's maybe 100 degrees right now, which is definitely higher than you'd want at most. Ideally, it'll be like 95. But overall, it looks pretty good. So this is a juvenile normal ball python. I don't know if it's male or female. I'll check the emails to see and I'll just toss that bag. I'm actually gonna wash my hands between each animal because there are always potential for things um, to have like contaminate other animals or make them sick. Um, this one overall looks fine. It's a little like loopy it's looking like, but it has been in a box for a day, so that is normal. I do actually have a survey that I send out to customers after a while experience, and one of the questions is the condition of the box and how the animal seems after shipping. Um, everyone, in fact, actually 100% of participants that took the survey said that the animal was in perfect condition and at most was a bit stressed or shooken up, but the box is in good condition. Yeah, so this definitely isn't normal. This is the ball python a few minutes after filming the video. It resembles a lot of things that remind us of spider ball pythons, which I've done a video on. But as far as we know, there are no spider genes. Uh, it also doesn't look like there's any spider genes present. So it might just be the ball python being scared, but it's... This, this isn't normal. So what we do is just look him over like I am now. He's just moving weirdly, and he doesn't seem super strong overall. He seems to have very low um, muscle mass. His body weight's okay, but he's just super squishy. But I'll find out and look into the emails to see if they gave us more info. The next animal is coming from MA. I don't know what state that is. Massachusetts. Montana. This person followed instructions, got the uh, correct labels in case this is open by FedEx, if it's suspicious or whatever. Heat pack is still there, still warm. The heat packs actually last three days. So technically most animals could last a long time in this box. 
obviously you want to get them out as soon as possible, but yeah. My favorite thing to do is seeing what people use as padding. A lot of people use their homework in tests and it's really funny because a lot of you have really bad grades and need to study more. One person most recently forgot to put a title on their essay. What happened to MLA format? I don't know. Um, and this person put an invoice. <laughs> I guess I'm not supposed to look, but also you mailed your invoice to me. It's kind of weird. Point. And this bag is completely green. It smells like tight. It smells like rubber. Like it came out of a car shop. There's been interesting smells. And here we are. A disgusting bag. Let's put that aside. <laughs> He's ready to go. This is a Russian tortoise. It's interesting. Okay. It's got an overgrown beak. Just a little bit. I haven't seen that in Russian tortoises before. I think we've taken in four Russians now. Uh, this is super dark though. I've never seen such a dark tortoise and I actually really like the look. Um, very contrasty on the back. The shell looks pretty good. There's very minor pyramiding, which is basically when each scoot, which is like the section on the shell, each scoot will grow up into a pyramid shape sometimes. It can be pretty hard to avoid um, and it's not ideal. It doesn't necessarily harm them, but it shows that there was something wrong with the husbandry nutrition. Usually with things like sulcata tortoises, it's usually an issue with um, humidity or diet. Russians, I'm not too sure what usually causes it, but I'm guessing it's the same thing. I just don't know off the top of my head. He looks very energetic and lively. The first thing we do is get him in the enclosure, give him water, and offer food if they want to go ahead and get a bite to eat. He's pretty fast. I'm curious if I'll just walk, walk off the edge of the table. Don't. He did it. Some of the animals commit Sudoku on arrival. It's okay, I would too if I ended up in my house. No matter how many times I wash my hands, the red ink is not coming off. This next one is coming actually from North Carolina, um, but they were about four, three or four hours away. Said so they went ahead and shipped. We do local meetups if we have to, but we try to avoid it. A lot of people no-show. Um, it's pretty hard to schedule in, because like to pick these six packages up, you just, we went to FedEx and got them all at once. But to do pickups, you have to find out a time that works for both people, find a location, which we select, um, actually drive there, meet up, and drive back. So we'll do it if we have to, to help out a person, but we really try to avoid it. Okay. <laughs> I'm, there's a chance this person's watching the video. So I don't want to be mean, but also you did a really bad job packaging this. I would say 90% do a perfect job packaging. Uh, this person did not fill out the Lacey Act label, which is required. All they did was mark that it's a reptile. They didn't say the species. So I don't know what this animal is. FedEx wants to know what it is too, because it could be an illegal species. Second, there was no heat pack uh, or cold pack. We're in North Carolina, it's been in the 50s. There should have been a heat or cold pack. Well, okay, a heat pack in this case. There's no note, a lot of people leave a note. And there's no padding. It's just the animal in a bag. What is this? It's spiky. It's not a bearded dragon. Oh my God. They put the heat pack in the snake bag. That's not what our instructions said. Some of these people are really bad at the one task that they have. The reason that's bad is because the heat pack actually gets 115 degrees on the surface, and that's kind of hot. It can't burn you, but it's not comfortable. So, let's see what... Oh, it's a bearded dragon. It's not a bearded dragon. I don't know what's in those heat packs, but it might be poisonous if they bite it. But, thankfully, the beard is okay. This is a female... I think it's a normal bearded dragon. I'm not great with breeding morphs off the top of my head, but it's super light and it's super lively, thankfully. Um, she looks good, she's alert, and she's probably really uncomfortable because she was up against the heat pack. So don't do that, please. But yeah, um, she, okay, care-wise, she actually looks perfect. Um, thank you to the person that sent it, even if you didn't package it perfectly. It looks like you cared for her wonderfully. She has all of her claws, no stuck shed, a full tail, which is extremely rare to see 
with bearded dragons, unfortunately, because they often get stuck shut on the end of their tail and they don't pull it off afterwards when it's ready to come off and it ends up rotting the end of their tail and it falls off. But this one is all good. Her face looks good. There's literally, this is one of the most perfect bearded dragons we've gotten. So honestly, it almost makes up for not packaging it well. Looks really good. I really like this color. Very little color, very muted color. I actually like this beardy. I don't want it for myself, but I'm happy it's here. And she looks really good. Also, she did not soil the bag. So I bet they actually followed instructions and didn't feed her before. So that's good. Okay, so next up, this is one from someone named Jackie who actually does not rehome animals to us, but rehome anim rehomes animals for us. One of the reasons we don't do local pickup when you buy an animal is because we have more than one location with animals. One of those being in New Jersey with Jackie and then we're in North Carolina. And so when we fill up space-wise, they start sending over to Jackie where she takes the excess animals to make sure they're cared for perfectly and nothing's neglected. This is one of those animals. And the reason Jackie sent it to us is because we do actually want to try some more breeding projects. Uh, I have not had successful breeding projects because we really haven't tried anything. The only thing we had tried was carpet pythons and they never actually copulated. So that was interesting. So although our fur could, although I'll, Although, although our focus is still on rehoming animals that need new homes, we do want to try expanding to breeding a little bit and see what it's like while not making it our priority business model or whatever. It's still something fun that we can try. And we get to judge Jackie's shipping and see how she did. Um, she actually wrapped the heat pack in newspaper or magazine paper, uh, which is good because if you use plastic to wrap things, it'll possibly suffocate the animal. She wrapped tape all the way around which actually kept it in place. It did not fall off. And all of the styrofoam is intact, so I can reuse it. There's a lot of padding here on top. We've got the animal here, which we'll look at in a sec, because I want to keep judging her packaging. We've got a bunch more newspaper um, and magazine here. And those padding on the top, sides, and bottom. Also, the box looks really good. It's a brand new box, not reused and the Lacey Act label is on here, spe specifically saying Walnut well, Brigacco. It does look like she dropped a urate in here. Um, it's a very little amount, so I'm sure it didn't eat. But yay, kudos to Jackie for shipping an animal perfectly. Um, so, you might not be surprised why I took this leopard gecko of all, because it's beautiful. Um, super bright colors, super healthy, super energetic. It looks really good, and it's really pretty, so. That's really cool. I, <laughs> this does stink because it pooped a little bit, which is fine. But this one looks exactly as we expected. I'm super happy to have this gecko here, um, and it's gonna make cool babies assuming it actually works out, so yay. That's exciting. It'll be paired with one of our males that we have, and we have about three or four that we're considering breeding right now, so that should be fun and bring some more variety because geckos are selling out too quickly for us to keep up with. Um, but I really like this one. I think we made a good choice. We've got two more boxes and three more animals. So this is a species that we actually don't take in. Um, it's a red eared no, what is it? Yes, yeah, a red ear slider. Uh, so the reason we don't take in red ears anymore is although we were taking in some, we ended up getting too many. Um, and we can't actually, we actually lose money every time we sell a red eared slider because we can't actually sell red eared sliders. They're an invasive species to North Carolina, which means that NC law doesn't let us like profit off of this. And we end up losing about 20 to $50 every time we sell a slider. But this one was a bit of an exception because the guy that gave it to us and this heat pack did come off, but it should be fine. The guy that gave us this turtle has had it for 18 years, which I believe is his entire life. So um, it was really sad to see that he had to rehome this animal, especially for someone that's had it for so long. Unfortunately, it looks, I haven't seen it yet because it's in the pack bag, but it looks a lot bigger than I was thinking. So this animal will end up costing a lot of money, but I am happy to say that we'll be able to help it out. And this box actually smells horrible. It's the worst smelling box I've had in months um, because it pooped everywhere. And I think it ate before. <laughs> this is a big turtle. So this is the red eared slider. I don't remember if it has a name or not. Um, looks super calm for it to have just been shipped in a box, which 
I'm not really surprised anymore because they often do really well. The shell is in pretty interesting condition because the shape looks great, but there's so much color. Like it, it's scraping off. It's, it's just mud or something, uh, which is fine. So this is the biggest redhead slider that I've ever held. It's a big turtle. <laughs> this turtle came down from New York and made it here in North Carolina. And yeah, it's actually one of the healthiest red-eared sliders I've seen. She has a massive head. That's, I don't want to feel a bite from her. I've been bitten by Franklin, my red-eared slider, who's like two thirds the size of this. And it was one of the worst bites I've ever had. She's got a couple scoots shedding beneath on her plastron, which is fine. She's so calm though, and so big. She doesn't even look too nervous. She's sticking her head out. So it's not like I regret taking the slider in, even if it will be um, not like the best decision when it comes to space and stuff, but I am happy that we can help the person out and hopefully find her a great home. She's big. That great home's gonna have to be really big because she's gonna need a lot of space. So yeah, here she is. The last box we have is coming from California. We have a bunch of different states today. So this one is two animals, two lizards. I think we have both of these species. Yeah, we have both of these species right now, actually. And they're kind of stressful. They kind of take up a lot of space, but they, they need new homes just like everything else. And oh God, it's a little bigger than I expected. <laughs> the heat pack did fall in. So it looks like we just need to give better instructions on how to keep this pack from falling into the package. And one's in a deli cup and one is in a bag. We're gonna start with the deli cup. This is an Asian water monitor. This is actually the second water monitor we have right now. The first we've had forever because it does not want to eat. We've only gotten it to eat a very few things in the couple months that we've had it, even though we've made sure the husband. Water monitors are kind of fast and also don't do great with people. I lost the water monitor. We'll be right back. I'm back with a water monitor. I'm very impressed they were able to get this into the container. They're not usually the most personable or the most friendly, but thankfully it looks very healthy and it's very pretty. It's um, pretty much all black with the little white stripes and speckles. Uh, pretty cool pattern. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to leave it in this cup to get you the shots and then I'll just release it straight into the enclosure once it's completely set up. Uh, very energetic. It did poop on me, but that's understandable. At least it held it until it was out of the box. This one is a red tegu. We've taken in three red tegus, along with an Argentine black and white tegu, which we have right now. They tied this very tightly, so I'm gonna have to cut it. But they pretty much everyone packaged these really well. There were just a few mistakes, and everything arrived safe and sound, assuming the tegu's okay. Um, so we've had a very friendly tegu and a not so friendly tegu, meaning that there's a 50-50 chance that this tegu will be friendly. Let's find out. Hello. So far so good, it's super warm, so it has the energy if it wants to use it. It's got a lot of stuck shed on the tail. It's a friendly one, look at that. Um, that makes me happy, so that I don't have as many stressed out animals here. This one did come with stuck shed on the tail. Hopefully they um, were aware of that, but if not, it's not a huge deal, because the tail is complete, meaning it probably hasn't had stuck shed in the past. It's possible it shed on the way. I don't think there's any shed in here though, so probably not. It's got all the claws which is nice. Stuck shed on one of the claws, which isn't a huge deal at first, but it can become a problem. It can make him lose his toes and claws, so you gotta be careful there. But look at that. He's nice. He looks very interested. And the funny thing is it looks exactly like a red tegu that we sold before. It's like the same size and same temperament. Uh, it's not the same person though, but it's funny how similar it is. I literally can't tell the difference. You could easily convince me this is the same Tegu. So although they do can have personality, they can also be really similar. That is our six packages and seven animals total that we received today. We try not to decline any animals because we feel very bad, but we do want to make sure we don't become overwhelmed and can afford everything. Um, but the thing is they come in waves where like this week we got a lot, but next week we might not get any and it might be an easy week. So it's always a surprise because it's not consistent at all. I never know what to expect. It's, it's really weird and a little tiring, but so far it's been working well. Now the great thing is overall, all seven of these animals won't take much work as long as they start eating and don't show any issues um, over the next number of weeks um, while they're here. 
None of them seemed to show signs of some anything that would be parasitic or sick in any way because they were all really good weights, which is rare to see. We usually get very underweight animals. Um, everything seems to be energetic, happy, healthy, and have come from great owners. So that's not very common to see when you're taking in animals from anyone from anywhere in the USA. I still love pet goose more than monitors. You can't change my mind. I did a video on it. I mean, I guess you could change my mind, but my mind has not been changed so far, as you see from exhibit A and B right here. So these animals will be available at some point. You can join the mailing list if you want to see when do it. And this is the most animals I've ever unboxed in one day. So this was pretty fun to do. Hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks for coming to check out the videos. That's it. I'm Alex. Thanks for watching.